start your lecture now. A very good morning, dear all. At the onset, I would first like to thank our entire emulators, our dean, respected Dr. Bagal sir, our college management, our principal, Dr. Joshi madam, all my teachers and my colleagues for providing me this wonderful opportunity to speak on today's online lectures. Thank you all. Now, dear students, before I start with my lecture, I would first like to congratulate each and every student for selecting such a wonderful line of medical sciences as homeopathy. Congratulations to one and all. Now students, today's topic is sources of homeopathic drugs. Yes, on the screen, you can definitely see students. We have got a number of collection of flora and fauna. And to my opinion, over the years, I have experienced that certain students are a bit anxious about sources of drugs because there are now, as we approach to it, you will come to know, there are many sources and subjects. So let us begin with sources of homeopathic drugs to see what are the different sources which we use, magnificent flora and fauna, which had already been given by our master, Dr. Hanuman sir, who believed in the nature's law of cure. Now homeopathic medicines are prepared from a wide range of natural sources. Over 75% of the medicines origin from the vegetable kingdom. Now students, you just try to focus because now we are going to see each and every slide with focus and concentration. You need to be alert, you need to be vigilant because it's not possible for us to give all the examples but I have tried to give you maximum essentiality of every source and subsource. And we will also see in between some interesting highlights. So let us begin. As you know, importance of studying sources is it has got over 7,000 7, homeopathic drugs are there. So can you believe this all over the world? And the most important part is the importance lies in the preparation of the mother tincture, which is the core extract from any part of the plant, may be animal kingdom, plant kingdom, nozod, sarcodes, or even the entire plant, if you see. Now, if you see the methods of study, we'll just see everything in or at a glance, because we have got a lot of things to be studied today. We've got a lot of presentations and illustrations, which will make you more better grasp and understanding towards the subject. Because I feel if we see, if we visualize that particular illustration, if you see that particular plant in total, you will be able to remember the examples absolutely very keenly. So let us see what are the methods of study. We have got four important methods of study. First is the morphological, the taxonomical, the phytochemical, and the pharmacological action. Morphological is based on the parts used for the medicine preparation, like leaf, root, stem, today what we are going to see. Then we have got the taxonomical. It is based upon the binomial classification of the plants. Third, we have got the phytochemical. Phyto itself means plant, based on the chemical constituents in the medicine, like alkaloids, glycosides, resins. We are going to see everything today. Then we have the pharmacological action in the form of purgatives, antispasmotics, diuretics, or diaphoretics. So this will be uh, discussed at the last. Now let us see what are the major sources of the drug. Three major sources. We have got the vegetable kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the mineral kingdom. Various herbs and plants are used. Specific parts are used. Elements are used. Metals are used. Organic acids are used. We are going to see in short, but which will make us remember. So let us go to the enhancement of this particular topic. Number one, vegetable kingdom. As I told you, more than 70% of the whole of the sources is by the vegetable kingdom or the plant kingdom. Followed by animal kingdom. 
ophiotoxins and lack source form the sub sources of the animal kingdom then we have the mineral kingdom then nosos sarcos imponderabilia and synthetic source we have started our sessions since the three months or most three months are over and by now you might be knowing what these are so let us start with the vegetable kingdom where various parts of the plant are used as sources now various parts means it can be either whole plant or a root stem leaf young shoot flower or a fruit seed bark wood extractions cryptogamia alkaloids resinoids glycosides so what i am going to do here today is to make us more grasping and understanding we will see what these parts are in short we have all studied biology recently but still just to review and rebrush your knowledge we will see what these parts are and two to three important drugs which are prepared out of it which will make you capably understand what exactly these are let us see from the whole plant for the whole plant we have a beautiful drug called as aconite nepellus whole plant it's also called as monk's hood can you see those beautiful flowers it's recognized by the as if it is looking like the hood of a monk so monk's hood next we go to the beautiful drug that is adonis vernalis if you see this drug very carefully the pheasant pheasant is actually like a hen the eye of the pheasant it's a bird hen like bird it just has got a very much you know similarity with the plant flower that is why it is called as the pheasant's eye if you see this it's called as pheasant's eye so adonis vernalis prepared from the whole plant look at the pictures very carefully my dear students it will definitely have a very good impact for you to learn and understand this particular topic next we have the whole plant as belladonna the deadly night shade then we have a drug called as chamomilla whole plant again it's a very good drug for teething uh, dentitional problems in small children then we have pulsatilla it is the wind flower whole plant you can see these flowers always come in group so next time we will definitely speak out the doctrine its signature of pulsatilla then we have the vinca minor it's also called as sadafuli because this plant is just like calendar uh, the whole of the year calendar or a calendula it is just like that vinca minor is always blooming throughout the perennial plant then we have the ruta it is again the ruta graviolens whole plant is used now let us go on to the roots now what are the roots all of us know they are the organs of the plant that will have the anchorage of the plant and take the water and the nutrients into the plant body it is also known as radicles see now we need to look for the uh, botanical terminologies as well because we are already we have entered into botanical kingdom so we need to know those terms more better as against the normal terms so roots are also known as radicles now let us see which are the drugs which are prepared from fresh roots homeopathy is a very keen science we have got every deep rooted meaning for every little part of the organ of the plant what we are using so here we will see the examples of fresh roots abroma augusta fresh roots next we have arum trifila now kindly do not mistake this as orum we have got orum metallicum as a drug which is prepared from metal it is orum a u r u m there are many students who get confused between arum and orum you have seen this very frequently they make mistakes and they lose their marks so it should be arum trifila okay so it is not orum but it is arum trifila it is the indian turnip how beautiful this plant is let's see the next one the cicuta virosa it's a very good drug for convulsions cicuta virosa the roots are used fresh roots next we have got the phytolacca decandra the roots of these particular plant is used phyto means plant lacca means red you can see the red color leaves and the berries as well 
Then we have got calotropin. It is also called as the rui, right? Dried roots. It's uh, many a times a plant which is used for religious purposes. Calotropis, a very good respiratory drug. Next, we have got the drug fecus indica. Now, this fecus indica, if you see here, the hanging aerial roots are used. What is aerial root? Something that is found in the air or takes place in the air. You can see the Indian banyan tree. You can see the aerial roots. It's a classic example of hanging aerial roots. So hanging aerial root, only one drug is there. Fecus indica, the Indian banyan tree. Next, we go on for the stems. Now, what is the stem? The stem is the main stalk of a plant. Main stalk. So we have got about six drugs from prepared from the main stock of the plant that is stem. The first one is Cactus grandiflorus. It's also called as night blooming period. Then we have got the next drug as Sabina. Sabina. Simisifuga. It's also called as Acetia simusifuga or Racimosa. We've got Gelsemium, a beautiful yellow looking yellow jasmine flower. Gelsemium, a very good drug for all types of apprehension. Next, we go for Rumex. It's a very good respiratory drug for dry cough. Hydrastis is one more example. Next, we have the corms and the bulb. As I told you, I'm also going to tell you certain interesting facts, you know, uh, as we get time later on. So corn, what is a corm? Everybody know, please do not misunderstand corn and corm. Again, we have seen students making, uh, you know, uh, confusion between a corn and a comb. It's not a corn, it is a corn. So what is a comb? A comb is an elongated, round, fleshy, underground stem. And the best example for the corn is Colchicum autumnal. I'm giving you only unique examples so that you can remember this for two things. Number, your, number one is your viva and second one is your examinations because you are or you will be asked a full question as well as a short answer question okay or short notes so at that time you have to be very very specific in writing down these uh, answers then we have got the bulb the bulb is the allium sepa it is a small disc like underground structure which you can see here allium sepa then we have got the leaves leaves are also known as folia these are flat organs which are responsible for the photosynthesis of the plant the very important essential mechanism of the life of the plant. So let us see the example from fresh leaves. For the fresh leaves, the very first drug which we have got in our mind is agal folia. It's a highly religious drug. Then we have got justicia adatoda. Justicia adatoda. You can see this is the baleful. And this is the trifoliate, the agrifolia, justicia adatoda, second. Next, we have rustoxicodendron. Rustoxicodendron, red leaves, yes, these are, you can remember it very beautifully. Then we have got the digitalis purpurea, so fox, fox glove. You can see how these flowers are just like gloves, fox glove, digitalis purpurea. Next, we have flowers. Now, flowers basically, they are facilitating the reproduction. Now, see, in flowers also, we have got varieties. Number one is flowering head. Next is flowering heads and the leaves together. Then we have got the stigma. And then we have got the flower bud, right? So let us see the unique examples of these. First is flowering head. We have got a beautiful drug called as cannabis sativa. Also, Sina, right? Here is Sina and here is cannabis sativa. Then we have Calendula officinalis. As I told you two minutes back, Calendula. It is the drug which is, which is going to be, you know, for the whole year round. It's just like the whole calendar. That name has come from the word calendar. Calendula officinalis. Flowering heads. Short, dense spikes in which the flowers are born directly on a broad, flat peduncle. We should know what we are studying. Just merely learning by heart is not going to take place. You need to understand the basics of it. So what is the flowering head? This is the flowering head. Now we'll go to one more 
डिलीशियस ड्रग आई शुड से स्टिग्मा जिसको आप केसर बोलते हैं इट्स अ रिसेप्टिव टिप ऑफ अ कार्पल इनर मोस्ट बॉल ऑफ अ फ्लार ओके सो क्रोकस सटाइबा इट इज प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम यू कैन सी इट इज प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम द स्टिग्मा दो रेड कलर्ड स्टिग्मा व्हिच यू कैन सी यू नो द रिसेप्टिव टिप्स व्हिच यू कैन सी इट इज प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम दैट एंड इट इज नोन एज क्रोकस सटाइबा जिसको हम बोलते हैं केसर नेक्स्ट वी हैव द फ्लावरिंग बट now here prunus spinosa is the example if you see very carefully my dear students you will see it is a undeveloped shoot which is having a small protuberance on the stem it's the exact drug what we i, I just need you to understand what is prunus spinosa similarly we have got young shoots asparagus officinalis asparagus officinalis now let us go on for fruits now fruits may be there are two type one is fleshy fruit and one is dry fruit fleshy fruit very and the most unique example the berry of the agnus castus and you know what is the berry let us tell just to rebrush our knowledge what is the berry it is a simple fruit having seeds and fleshy pulp this is called as agnus castus whereas esculus glabra is the dry fruit where the entire pericarp becomes dry and often brittle so this is the example of esculus glabra the dry fruit now we come on to the pods the pods basically if you see it's a, a, a structure which you can see here in a it has got a bit of uh, uh, the elongated stem is there it elongated it is there and it doricos is the example for this whereas we have the carica papaya a soft juicy succulent plant of a fruit okay so carica papaya is the example of the pulp next we have the seeds now again seeds are of two types one is the fresh seed one is the dry seed now fresh seed and dry seed may be anything you need to know what is a seed so seed as all of us know it is a small embryonic plant enclosed in a covering it is it is called a seed cover and it has got some stored food as well it is composed of the embryo so let us see the examples of fresh seeds and dry seeds fresh seeds we have got avina sativa see see at the illustrations over here they are very important for you you will be having a lot of understanding once you see the illustration audio visual uh, teachings are very important they keep you connected and they exactly you will understand how these particular plant animal or the source looks and you will be able to have a better understanding of it i'm sure for that next we have the drug ignatia amara okay ignatia amara then we have got dry seeds yes coffea every one of us likes coffee so coffea cruda is the name of the drug which is prepared from dry seeds then we have nux vomica the quaker buttons or the kuchla seeds they are prepared from dry seeds i am taking important examples which you can remember as well as in your practice also they are very important drugs next we have the most important part is the bark here we have again two parts one is the fresh and the other one is the dry in the fresh bark which is the outer covering of the stems and the roots especially of the woody plants or the trees we have got abyss canadensis abyss canadensis is the example of a fresh bark whereas we have got a dried bark yes the birth drug of our homeopathy our master proved it the first drug which was proven on himself was cinchona of pecinalis yes it is definitely a very important drug dried bark is used for the preparation of cinchona of pecinalis next we have got bark of the root a very good drug uh, called as batisia tinctoria it is a very good drug for enteric fever we've got example of wood in the form of santalum album chandan jisko hum bolte hain santalum album wood then we have got the extracts in the form of juice juices are the liquid extracts of plant okay we have got the raisins as well raisins is a solid Uh, you know it's a viscous substance which is used we have got example abiscan juice we have got example uh, aloe cocotrina jisse hum succulent plant bolte hain corpad bolte hain fir we have got balsam they are basically aromatic resinous substances which are you know flowing spontaneously you can see into the 
illustration over here that they just flow very spontaneously by any type of incision upon the bark. So this is balsam to do so. Next, we have got cryptogamia. Now, what are cryptogamia? You have already learned this last year. They have hidden reproductive organs. They do not bear seeds and fruits, right? So they are always going to reproduce by force. We have got algae, fungi, and the nitrates. In the algae, we have got the fecus vesiculosus as example. In the fungi, we have got the agaricus macarius, and we have got lichens in the form of sticta pulmonaria. Now we'll come to alkaloid. As I told you, we are going to cover up almost everything, but in short, in a precise way, so that you will understand and you will know the topic, though it is widespread, in a gist. So we have got alkaloids over here. Now, what are alkaloids? They are the most important natural bases containing nitrogen, right? Which is found in the plant. In Hindi, it is called like sharab, vanaspatyunka mool tattva, right? Now, alkaloids, if you see, they are generally very active in their pharmacological behavior. They are having, as I told you, nitrogen containing heterocycle metabolites of the plant. Okay, so let us see what are the alkaloids which are there. Here we have got certain alkaloids in front of you. Sikil core, we have got tobacco, nicotine, coffee, cruda, colchip, motemnal, conium, mechalitum. Okay, then hyoscyamine, we have got hyoscyamine. Epicat, Nuxvomica, Strychnine. Now we go on for the resinoids. Resinoids are the extracts of the resinous plant exudates. It's called as Ralnumaji, right? So they consist of the precipitates in the powder form. They are derived from dry materials, right? And they embody the most important active principles of the plant. Here again, we have got the resinoids you can see on the screen. Bapticine, which is prepared from Bapticia tinctoria, Chilomine from Chilone, Irisine from Iris versicole, Macrotine from Simicifuga, and Sanguinarin from Sanguinaria canadensis. These are important resinoid examples. Next, we go on for the gum or the resins. You can see this beautiful slide. The one and only one gum resin which is prepared is as a poison gas. So you might be knowing. But just to tell you, these are naturally occurring substances, milky exudates, and they are usually collected. You can see the picture over here, collected in the form of pears or irregular masses, okay? And tapping the plant also produces the same. So you can see after the preparation, it is coming in the form of asapoidida, which is very commonly called as hing, okay, in the vernacular language. Next, we have got the glycosides. The glycosides, as you know, they are compounds formed from simple sugars and uh, the compounds with the replacement of the hydroxyl group with the sugar, right? So here we have got certain glycosides. Remember one thing, they are non-reducing compounds. They are non-reducing compounds. In the glycosides, examples we have is adonidine. These are very important examples, dear students. Adonidine, which is prepared from Adonis vernalis. Then we have agaricine, which is prepared from agaricus muscarius. Then we have got alloin, which is prepared from allosopotrina. We have seen all these just now. Then we have got arbutin, which is prepared from uva ursi. Then we have colosynthin, a type of glycoside, which is uh, found in the bitter cucumber, that is the colosynthes. And last but not the least, digitalin, which we have seen in the beginning, the whole plant, digitalis purpurea. These are just the chemical structures of alkaloids, resinoids, and glycosides, so that you will know that these are the chemical structures in which they represent form. Next, we come on for the volatile or essential oils. Now, remember, students, here we have got two types of oils for preparation. One is the essential oil or the volatile oil, and second is the fixed oil. You just need to know. What is the difference between the two? Because it's a very important thing. Basically, volatile oil, as its name suggests, is always characterized by the volatility. That means what? They are going to evaporate when they're exposed to the air. And therefore, they are capable of distillation. We know distillation is going to be there for our practicals. You are going to see how distillation is done. And they are derived from plant tissues. 
so volatile oil is sometimes called as an essential oil very important it is the essential oil now let us see the examples of essential oil as i told you the primary source is a plant so either it is a leaf or a root or a petal or a bark so here one more thing you need to remember in the oils especially is oils in homeopathic process of drugs are usually propagated as oleum is the latin terminology oleum so all oleum is oil so if you say oleum cajuputi it is the oil of cajuputi similarly oleum caryophyllum is the oil caryophyllum oleum cinnamomum is the cinnamon oil oleum eucalyptus that is nilgiri is the eucalyptus oil similarly santalum album se jo hum oil banate hain it is called as oleum santalum that is sandalwood so this is the volatile oil next we have got the most important as the uh the other sources their major sources like as i told you we have got uh, uh, the uh, uh, oleum crotonis as croton oil oleum vitini as castor oil okay so these are basically the fixed oils which are basically prepared from the seed the plant right they are also called as fatty oils and as a mixture of the fatty acids now we go on for the next important kingdom we have finished with the vegetable kingdom now we go on for the animal kingdom now animal kingdom has its own place right because it is having certain microbes bacteria viruses we have got nozoles sarcos we have got the ophiotoxins we have got the lag group okay we have got the uh, the whole animal animal secretions etc okay and of course the revolutionary method of drug preparation will be potentization always unique for all the kingdom so let us see the example in the animal kingdom whole living animal i have taken only for example for better understanding and remembrance number 1 apis mellifica that is honey bee then here we have got the next drug cyanus acanthia jisko aap khatman bolte hain bed bug right remember these things only four five four five words so you have to remember this also for your examination as well as for your understanding right so the next example is vespa crabro wasp basically a very uh, unique feature of this particular wasp is it makes uh, a paper pulp mixture okay the female workers usually they chew up the dead bark of the trees or the plant matter and they mix it with their saliva and they prepare a beautiful paper pulp mixture like this can you see this yes it's a very important uh, uh, what you can say uh, an interesting fact of vespa crabro then we have got the culex musca which is the house mosquito okay the house mosquito is the culex musca then we have got the spider group as all of you know spider group are joint legged invertebrate animals that is the arthropods we are going to see certain examples of spider group here remember one thing spiders are the unique insects which spin silk right so here we have got the first example as arenia avicularis the black cuban spider i told you be focused and look at the images illustrations very well you will remember this no wonder how difficult it is but you will remember this so this is the next example that is the lactrodectus mactans the black widow spider the black widow spider next example we have the mygale lacidoria large black spider indeed it is large black spider it's also called as bird spider okay then we have got the tarantula cubensis it is also called as the cuban spider next we have got a very commonly used spider very examples bolenge to pehle tarantula hispanica aata hai right so tarantula hispanica is a spanish spider uh, indeed if you can see the image over here will be a hunting spider it's also called as hunting spider okay now we have got one more example called as theridion theridion is a long legged cobweb spider can you see the long legs of the spider yes indeed that is why it is called as long legged cobweb spider remember students when you are trying to grasp sources of drugs you should always remember their common names as well okay next we have got the scorpion group scorpion group everybody knows they are terrestrial arthropods subtropical regions they are they from mountains to the plains 
from the forest to the deserts. They live in holes, crevices, under stones, logs of wood, decaying leaves. Right? So let us see the examples of scorpion group. First example, the European scorpion, that is Scorpio europus. Next example, we have got Aurelia medusa, jellyfish, a beautiful jellyfish here, Aurelia medusa. Next, we have got Pisalia. Can you see this particular protuberance? It is a gas-filled float, okay? It is again a type of jellyfish, Pisalia. It is also called as Portuguese man of war. Here, we have got the next example in the form of Helix tosta, the toasted snail. Helix tosta prepared from toasted snail. We have already entered into the zoological kingdom, the animal kingdom. And now we are seeing the different parts of the animals used. Next, we have got Asterius rubens, red starfish. Yes, how beautiful. It's just like its name, the red starfish. It is called as rubens because rubens means red. So Asterius rubens. Next, we have got Payara. If you can see, this is a sucking fish actually. And if you can see its teeth, it is actually like a dog tooth. So the common name of this drug is also dog tooth. It's actually looking like a dog tooth. Next, we have examples of whole dried animals. Here we have got only four unique examples which can be really remembered for. Number one, Blata americana, Blata orientalis, Cantharis, and Coctus cacti. It is a very common arthropod which you can see here. Blata americana, the American cockroach, and the Indian cockroach, Blata orientalis. Next, we have got a beautiful emerald green colored Spanish fly. It's a very poisonous fly, which is also called as blister beetle Cantharis vesicatoria. Cantharis vesicatoria is an example of this particular fly. We have got coccus cacti. If you see, this is an insect infesting, uh, which is only infesting upon the cactus. Therefore, its name is coccus cacti. Coccus cacti. Next, we have got the skeletons. Here, we've got two types of skeletons. One is the roasted and one is the fresh. In the roasted one, we have got the example of spongia tosta and in the fresh water, we have got bedaika. See the illustrations properly. They are very important. Next, we have got the secretions in the form of blood and juices. Okay, let us see the example of blood. There is a crab which is called as river crab or a horse foot crab. You know, the zoological name goes as limulus. Can you see the shape of this particular crab? Yes, absolutely you have recognized it. It's just looking like a horse foot, right? Therefore, it is called as a horse foot uh, uh, crab, okay? So this is limulus. Remember, unique examples I'm giving, you will definitely remember this, okay? Next, we have got mephitis. Mephitis is prepared from the anal gland of the wild cat. It's also called as skunk. Okay, it's also called as skunk. Next, we go on for the juices again. Here, we have got a unique fish, which every one of us knows, the cuttlefish or the sapia. Sapia officinaris. This is a very good fish who has got, uh, it's, uh, you know, the inky juice, which is into the belly of this particular cuttlefish, the abdominal sac. When there is, you know, some type of enemy, it uses this ink as an escape mechanism, okay? So the inky juice of the cuttlefish, very important example. One more example we have for the juices is Murex purpurea. Murex purpurea or the purple fish. Next, shells. Yes, we, here we have got two examples. One is the calcinated oyster shell, the middle layer of the oyster shell called the calcarea calcinata. Please see the image properly. It's very important. It is the shell which we use, the middle layer, the middle layer. Next, we have got the pectin. Basically, it is a comb-like structure which is used for grooming and filtering for the sensory adaptations of the aquatic animal. This is the pectin. Okay, so exa example is pectin. Pectin is the name of the drug. Next, we have got uh, one more example of the secretions here, homarus. It is prepared from the digestive fluid of lobster. These are unique examples. Again, I'm telling you, if you remember these examples well, you are able to have a beautiful 
knowledge of the process of drugs okay so homarus homarus is the digestive fluid of the lobster example of carbo animalis here the animal charcoal what is animal charcoal it is a porous black granular material produced by carrying the animal tissues okay we have got one more called as vegetable charcoal kindly do not mix this with animal and the plant so it is different this is an animal source the carbo vegetable is, is the vegetable uh, source which is prepared from birch wood next we have the particular preparations of uh, gall bladder here we have got the fell piscinum which is prepared from fresh gall of the dog then fell tauri which is prepared from fresh gall of the horse next we have a very wonderful kingdom which was first uh, uh, given by the information was given by dr e a farrington the ophiotoxins the snake venoms as we say are basically the ophiotoxins and the kingdom under which it is coming is ophidia the class reptilia and phylum chordata so we have got certain snake venoms or the ophiotoxins the important ones here i would just like to jot down and show you as well what they are the first is lachesis lachesis trigonocephalus also called as lachesis muta then bungaris fasciatus can you see how these uh, you know the stripes are looking like fascias so bungaris fasciatus we have next called as ophiotoxins in the form of crotalus horridus arbitrarily if you see it is a horrible looking snake so it is called as horridus crotalus horridus then we have got elaps corallinus if you see how these beautiful structures upon the you know the snake skin it's just like a coral so the name goes by elaps elaps corallinus then we have got the lizard poison heloderma horridus we have got the scorpion poison centroid next we have the lat group lat group basically are prepared from milk and milk products right in the lat group we have got examples in the form of lat can lat felinum so just like oleum we have got uh, you know whenever we want to say that this is particular a milk or a milk product prepared from the sources of drugs we always prefix it with lac okay so lac can is dog's milk lac felinum is cat's milk lac vaccinum is cow's milk lac defloratum is the skimmed cow's milk then we have got lac vaccini flock which is prepared from the cream we have cow miss a very unique drug fermentation of the asses milk then we have got the colostrum which is prepared from the mother's milk that is the recent birth of a baby so these are certain examples what we can sort for you in the form of lac group many a times the short note is asked on this now we enter the uh, very basic core of the earth that is the mineral kingdom the mineral kingdom we have got acids elements compounds minerals spring water in the acids again we have got the organic acids the inorganic acid organic acid example we have got acetic acid inorganic we have got the muriatic or the hydrochloric acid in the inorganic acid you know they do not contain carbon okay so examples are boric acid also called as hydrobromic acid we have got muriatic acid nitric acid phosphoric acid sulfuric acid okay so this is for the uh, inorganic acid examples let us go on for organic acids so organic acids they are derived from plants and animals we need to know the difference between organic and inorganic and remember one thing dear students presence of carbon very important so let us see the examples of organic acids acetic acid benzoic acid salicylic acid carbolic acid citric acid formic acid acid uh, lactic acid and oxalic acid okay sometimes you can also the acidum aceticum so it can be uh, prefixed and suffixed like this also or acidum benzoicum acidum salicylicum acidum carbolicum likewise next we come on to the elements you know what are elements right but still we should uh, just try to rebrush it again they are pure substances we cannot be broken down into simpler substances by any means right so no for the unanalyzable substance is called as element let us see out of this the metals which are again a part of elements we have got here aluminium 
aurum meta i told you in the beginning aurum triphylum aurum metallicum this is aurum a u r u m aurum metallicum next we have got cuprum metallicum prepared from copper now let us see the metals which are used absolutely metals you know they are solid materials which are typically hard shiny malleable fusible and ductile so you know that metals property itself is shining and ductility and malleability so let us see the important examples of metals number 1 alumina aluminium se banaya jata hai ye next we have got the argentum metallicum it is prepared from silver uh, it is a typographic uh, it is not nitricum it is metallicum then we have got aurum metallicum it is prepared from gold we have got cobaltum prepared from the cobalt cuprum metallicum i told you again for met is a short form officially adapted short form but met means metallicum prepared from metal is cuprum metallicum right similarly ferrum metallicum prepared from iron we have got mercurius it is prepared from you know it is the only liquid metal hg that is mercury we've got palladium from palladium metal platinum from platinum metal then we have got the name of the drug is platina plumbum metallicum prepared from lead then we have got stannum metallicum prepared from tin then we have got the zincum metallicum prepared from zinc so whenever asked you need to tell in this way why i'm telling it because you need to also Uh, you know grasp it in this way and tell in your vivers in the same do not say short forms please from non metals chemical element that lacks the characteristic of a metal is called as a non metal here we have got four important non metals number 1 bromine next is iodium that is prepared from iodine then we have got the phosphorus which is prepared from phosphorus a uh, non metal it's a luminous metal stored under water and last is sulfur there are many but i told you since we have to be precise we need to remember these important at least right so we have got here the illustrations for sulfur a beautiful bright yellow non metal then we have got bromine iodine as a part of non metal let us see the inorganic compounds ammonium group iron group and the potash group right here we prepare from ammonium group many are there examples are ammonium acetate we have just tried to highlight there are many kindly refer your textbooks and reference books for this there are many examples which have been given the most important thing is to understand the baseline fundamentals what are inorganic what are organic compounds what are the groups which are there under it iron group we have got ferrum fos in the potash group we have got the causticum let's go on for the mineral kingdom other sources of mineral kingdom in the form of mineral oil kerosene paraffin petroleum all these are mineral oils then we have got gold tar distillation example is naphthalein then from dry distillation of wood we have got the camphor and the creosote you can see these examples which i have tried to jot it down for you now let's see organic compounds these are large class of gaseous liquid or solid chemical compounds whose you know you can see the preparation crude rock oil petroleum how it's prepared can you see this it's very important one more example as i told you camphor camphor is an organic compound it's a class of gaseous liquid solid chemical compounds then from inorganic salts and compounds here we have got examples in the form of barium carb or that barita carb then barita mu that is barium chloride calcarea fos then calcarea carb lithium carb natrium sulf kali fos ammonium mu and ammonium carb here are the examples of the what you can say the kaolin minerals here occurring in organic solid with a definite chemical composition and an ordered atomic arrangement as there silicia and kaolin the minerals we have got not only this but mineral spring water you know so it's a what is a mineral water it's a impregnated with mineral you know this particular water is impregnated natural minerals are there so here examples i can sort for you is aqua calcarea and aqua regia aqua calcarea aqua regia 
now we go on for the kingdoms of sarcoids and nosoids as all of us know sarcoids are healthy secretions prepared from the basic protoplasm the vegetable protoplasm and from the hormones and the enzymes the hormones enzymes which are obtained from the ductless glands that is also called as the endocrine gland the secretions are mostly in the form of hormones and the enzymatic secretions here either we use the whole gland or the organs or the tissues or the extractions of the animals as well as the human being let us see certain examples of sarcoids from healthy endocrine glands here we have the first one in the form of adrenalin the adrenal cortex and the medulla adrenal gland adrenalin we also prepare a sarcoid which is called as adrenocorticotropin hormone from the cortisol next we have insulinum which is prepared from the beta cells of islet of langerhans pancreas and the thyroidinum which is prepared from the thyroid gland here we have also the normal secretions just we had discussed uh, about 5 minutes back in the lab group the colostrum it again comes under the sarcoid group as it is a normal secretion of the animals and the humans then we have got the peptidinum and the placenta then we have nosoids here nosoids are homeopathic preparations which are prepared from disease products cultures of the microorganisms bacteria fungus or viruses or parasites infected or pathological changed material also from decomposed products of the humans right so here it can be classified into human plant and animal as well as the other nosoids you will see a glimpse of it what they are in the first slide you can see here pertussin which is prepared from whooping cough next diphtherinum which is prepared from diphtheria next we have got the tuberculinum which is prepared from culture of the mycobacterium tuberculosis all these are the examples of the disease products of human beings next we have the nosoids of plants disease products of plants here we have got classic examples one and only one example from the trees is nectrinium which is prepared from the cancer of the trees next we have got cecal core and eustila gomeris cecal core is again the ergot on the rye that is on the indian grain and the eustila gomeris as well both of them are fungal in infections which take place on the plants next we have the nosoids which are derived from the animals here we have got two classic examples number one ambra grisia now what is ambra grisia ambra grisia is the morbid product from the sperm whale right it's there again in the belly and anthracinum which is prepared from the rabbit it is again an anthrax poison the lysate is taken for its preparation we go on for the next source which is a very very unique source students we need to uh, you know a bit uh, go faster because uh, you know time restraints are there but yet we have tried to put forth the precise essentialities of every part of the source of the drug right so here we have one more unique and excellent uh, homeopathic source called as imponderabilia which is only found in our patty basically it is derived from the word the imponderia word is derived from the word imponderable which means non weighable substances those which have got no perceptible weights they are called as imponderabilia or imponderable sources they are also termed as direct energy medicines okay because we are now going to see which are the particular energy sources from which we are preparing these particular homeopathic medicines here we have got the natural and the artificial right in the natural source we have got magnetis poli ambo with the entire magnetis taken this is a natural source whereas one more the north pole only the north pole of the magnet and that is magnetus polis africus luna and sol the details of its collection is going to be discussed in the next part that is the collection of the drug right it's also a widespread entity so we will not discuss it here because now we are only upon the sources of drugs we are, we are, we are telling you the details of it then we have got the artificial sources one is the x ray second is the radium bromide and third is the electricity can you see this the magnetus poli ambo the whole entire magnet along with luna the 
energy of the full moon sugar of milk is completely exposed to the full moon as well as to the sun called as sol s o l sol can you see these artificial sources x rays the roentgen rays here is the radium bromide radioactive compound it glows with a beautiful brilliant green light it's a radioactive element electricitas electricitas is also one of the artificial sources of imponderabilia next we have got the synthetic source as the last source it's also known as totopathy here toto means same so what is it it is a method of curing or removing the bad effects which are you know caused by the antibiotics for example uh, we have got penicillin now what if suppose a patient comes to us what exactly we do in synthetic sources we are going to potentize penicillin to remove its side effects upon the patient who has come to us with the person who is having bad effects and the side effects of the antibiotic penicillin so what is basically totopathy it is that one where we are going to prepare homeopathic medicines totally strictly in the process of homeopathic pharmaceutical discipline to remove the side effects or the bad effects of the antibiotics we have got several synthetic source we have got amoxicillin cefalexin we have got um, other sources like histamine hydrochloride etc so you should remember though, these three four at least three four are very important then we have got allergens what are allergens as the name suggests they are homeopathic attenuations of antigens which are prepared basically in helping you know the allergies to reduce allergies we take moderate or large doses of these uh, particular antigens and we prepare of course again strictly in terms of homeopathic potentization and uh, definitely which will really help us to reverse the antibody cascade and help us to get rid of the allergic factors within the body so if you see this um, my dear students we have seen in short the whole of the sources of drugs about 70% of the homeopathic drugs as i told you have been derived from the plant sources but also for the maintenance of this particular source material either in the fresh or the live condition our respected council has established medicinal plant research garden and survey of the medicinal plants and cultivation unit right so uh, where uh, they collect all the raw drug materials from all the areas surveyed from all over india and here the upgradation work in the form of uh, you know what you can say the council has taken place uh, different pharmacological studies are there physico chemical studies are there especially for the finished products that is which we call as fps still the upgradation of the work of homeopathic pharmacopoeia of india goes on absolutely very beautifully so we need to always uh, see to it that uh, hpi we definitely would uh, go and visit the hpi regarding this particular aspect so as nature performs major miracles for us every day from giving us great views helping to prevent floods droughts regulating weather and keeping us fresh living by plants and animals and naturally occurring so does our homeopathy so homeopathy the nature's law of cure through its various natural sources we have seen the various flora and fauna we have seen the mineral kingdom the animal kingdom we have seen various secretions we have seen the skeletons and always remember here the animals are not harmed in any way no violent techniques are used that is what i told you in the next session we will definitely discuss regarding the collection it's always done in a non violent way right so definitely these are all miraculous medicines from the natural resources so why not let us preserve this and create more awareness to make a unique pathy globally so this is what i would uh, like to present today regarding this particular topic as i told you it's a wide spread and extensive topic to be learned for but if we focus on our topics if we see the sources sub sources we learn them we grasp them definitely there will be no difficulty in uh, uh, learning them and understanding them as well because learning is not a point you need to understand the basics and then you need to 
put it down in your um, academics. Uh, so with this, I would like to thank all my dear students once again for a very patient hearing. I would like to thank all of y'all, all the respected dignitaries, all my colleagues, everyone here, especially the MUHS assistant staff who has really helped us such a lot, especially Ravi sir, who has been with us throughout and helped us to put it in such a big dais. I definitely uh, am thankful to all of you for having this patient hearing. Thank you very much, students. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Ma Thank you.